A merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. My name's Arthur, I thank you for joining me as we share together from Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. There are some people whose company we enjoy because they always have a positive outlook and it encourages us to see the positive outlook that they have. They tell us stories of things that they have achieved and so we all like to receive good news. A merry heart does good, like medicine. It's amazing the influence that a little bit of joy, a little bit of good news can have on a person. But a broken spirit dries the bones. When we have lost hope, when we don't see the way forward, when we despair, when we give up, life becomes very hard and very heavy. This is an observation that Solomon has made. And we see it in our experience of life. Often we try and make ourselves merry. Merry out of a bottle doesn't really count. It's bad medicine just as spirits out of a bottle dries our bones. That's what alcohol will do to us. What we need is something that can lift our spirits, that can give us hope, give us a reason for getting up each day, something to achieve, something to look forward to. And how can we do that in a world that is so broken, where our news Broadcasters tell us every day of bombings and murders and shootings, of natural disasters, of failures of our favourite football team to win. So many things that go wrong. Sicknesses, cancer, that bring despair, that destroy hope. At one level, the Bible gives no hope for this earth. It says that this is an evil world. It is corrupted. It is destined for destruction. All the efforts that we might make about climate change will not fix the earth. It is like a top running down. It is growing old as a garment. You can't stop your clothes getting old. You can't stop the earth growing old. And it's growing old at a much faster rate than many people like to accept. Some argue that the earth is billions of years old. But no, It is only 6,000 years old. What we see happening in the world today has happened only in the last 6,000 years. The future of this world looks bleak. But the New Testament has come to give us hope because God created this world with the ultimate goal of bringing many sons into glory. And the promise of Scripture is that those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who are entitled to enter into the new heavens and new earth which God has prepared, and the new Jerusalem, a city of fellowship, where there will be no more sorrow and death and crying. The old things are passed away. All things become new. And this is the hope that has been set before us in the scriptures. The children of Israel were told that God would give them a land that flowed with milk and honey, and they could enjoy it if they walked in God's way. But they didn't walk in God's way. They took it all for granted. And so God said, I'll kick you out of the land. But in the latter days, I will bring you back. So the nation of Israel was kicked out in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, at the rise of the times of the Gentiles. The remnant that had returned was kicked out again by Titus in AD 70, and again 135. But the scriptures always promised that in the latter days there would be a return, there would be a re-establishment. There was hope given to the nation. And so they have this saying, next year in Jerusalem. And they've been saying that for many years. But it is the hope that keeps them going, each generation looking forward to the future that God has prepared. Christians also have that future. Our anticipation is not just to live in the land of Israel, That was a promise to the nation of Israel, which God will keep and fulfill in what's called the millennium, the thousand years when Christ reigns on the earth and the nations of the world will turn their swords into plowshares and will go up to Jerusalem each year saying, teach us the ways of the Lord. 
believers in the Lord Jesus will participate in that as the bride of Christ. But ultimately, there is a new heavens and new earth where believers in the Lord Jesus are citizens. And we look forward to that as Christians break bread each Lord's Day, taking the bread and the wine. We do this until he come. There is the promise of his coming. There is the promise of rescue. Our sins are forgiven in the past. The Spirit gives us strength to resist evil in the presence. But the full salvation comes when we enter into a new body, made like unto his glorious body, which shall suffer pain no more. This body grows old as a tent grows old, but we will set it aside to receive the new body. And so the exhortation to believers in the midst of their trouble and difficulties, in this world you shall have tribulation, fear not, I have overcome the world, Jesus says, is to rejoice in the Lord. Again I say rejoice, to take the joy of the Lord with you and go through life knowing that God is overseeing the affairs of our lives. We can look at the world and see the sorrow that it has, but we can look to our God and see the hope that he has set before us. And the guarantee of that is the Spirit who helps us. The Spirit so that we carry on, no matter what the circumstances. There is a dark day, but the sunshine lies ahead. A merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. God's people are to do good to all men, especially the household of faith. When we have hope in God, we have a reason to get up each day and to do the good things that God gives us to do. The things that we are able to do are a blessing to others. They're an encouragement to others. As others see us taking a positive outlook in life, then they are encouraged to take a positive outlook in life as well. But so many people in this world are broken. Their spirit is dry. They don't get involved, are sceptical, they've been hurt, they have no hope for the future. So many are committing suicide. It seems to be the major cause of death amongst young people, even over things like car accidents. We need hope as we need faith and we need love. And the thing that overcomes the difficulties of life is the hope that is set before us. Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. And we're encouraged, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne on high. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. We must take up his cross and follow him, bearing his shame outside the city. For we have a city a city of joy, the heavenly Jerusalem, which God has prepared for those who love him. And the only ones who can enter into that city are those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. How do you get your name written in that book? It is simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. God has a record of those who are registered in heaven. We simply need to come to him and request that we be accepted as citizens of heaven. On the basis that Jesus has paid for our place, when he died on the cross, he became surety for us. The guarantee that we will participate, we're told, is the Spirit of God that is given to those who repent and believe. And so a merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. You can have the joy of the Lord in your heart and be a blessing to others as you do good in Jesus' name.